Assalamualaikum and good day to you. So, okay, before we move to chapter 2, I hope all of you have clear understanding on chapter 1, mole balances. If not, do not keep to yourself. Please discuss in your group. Get your teammates to explain again. Okay? Okay, it is because when you read alone, only 20% of what you learn will stay with you. But the percentage will increase when you teach your friends. Okay, see? It's increasing. When you teach your friend, you will remember most of what you learn. So please, do not hesitate to teach and learn to and from your group members. If you still could not understand, you can visit my office or Dr. Tazli's office. But please, make sure you make an appointment first, okay? So in chapter 2, you will learn about conversion and reactor sizing. So for this chapter, there are 5 learning outcomes that you need to achieve. So for this part 1 of chapter 2, you should be able, by end of this video, you should be able to define the conversion. This will be the first learning outcome. And second, to develop design equation for batch and flow reactor. This will be your second learning outcome for this lecture. Learning outcome. The rest will be covered in the next lecture. Before I go in detail into the chapter 2, let's have some overview or relation between chapter 1 and chapter 2. Okay. So in chapter 1, you have learned on how to do reactor sizing using mole balance. Okay. And in this chapter, you will learn on how to relate the mole balance relate with the conversion and then write the reactor sizing in term of conversion. Ultimately, you will apply the developed design equation to solve apply design equation to solve problems related to flow reactors and reactors in series. Okay, let's again recap from chapter 1. Okay, these are design equations in terms of mole balance in terms of mole for each type of reactor. So now the challenge is to how do we relate conversion with flow rates or mole of reactants. So flow rate is for flow reactor, moles of reactant is for batch reactor. Okay, what is conversion? Okay, let's consider this general reaction. A, react with B, producing C and D. Okay, so the capital letter here, capital letter A, B, C and D is the chemical species. And while the small letter, the lower letter, the lower case letter is the stoichiometric coefficient. Stoic stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, so now we choose one of the reactants as the basis for calculation. So normally, here here we choose A because normally the reactant, the reactant that we choose. As a basis, is usually the limiting reactant. Okay. So, the limiting reactant. Okay, now we divide. To put, uh, we divide the stoichiometric coefficient of other species with A. To put every quantity on a per mole of A basis. Okay. So, you have A plus B over AB, producing C over AC, plus D over AD. So the main question here is, how do we define conversion? 
Okay, so conversion is a way of describing how far a reaction produce, how far a reaction proceeds to the right. Okay, so consider A as a reactant. The conversion of A denotes as this XA is equals to the moles of A reacted over moles of A fat. Okay, so the maximum conversion for irreversible reaction is 1. So, meaning that the number moles of A reacted will be equals to the mole of A fat. So, it's 100% conversion. And the conversion, the maximum conversion for reversible reaction is equals is equals to the equilibrium conversion. So, E here is equilibrium. Right. Okay, so by now, you should have a clear understanding on the definition of conversion. Okay, now, how do we relate the conversion, the X, with the moles of reactant? Okay, so, firstly, we focus on the batch reactor. Okay, so for batch reactor, mole of A at any time, T, so Na is equals to mole of A fat, Na naught, minus mole of A reacted. So, the mole of A reacted is mole of A fat times the conversion factor. So, this is equation 1 for batch reactor. While for the flow reactor, it is similar to the batch reactor except that for flow reactor, we use fluoride, molar fluoride. So, we have molar fluoride of A at any time T, F A, equals to molar fluoride of A at the inlet, F A naught, minus the molar fluoride of return A at the outlet. So, F A naught times the conversion factor. So, this is the equation for flow reactor. Okay, now we have discovered the required equation. Still, we need now to relate the conversion and the volume. Okay, now let's just recap back our design equations. And we also have just dis discovered the relation between conversion and the con mole valence and also the flow rate. Now the challenge is how to write the design equation in terms of conversion. So relate volume with the conversion. Okay, now for the first reactor, the batch. Okay, remember we have the mole balance for batch is Ra V equals to DNA over dt this is equation number one and also we have just discovered that n a equals to n a naught minus n a naught x this is equation number two now differentiate equation two differentiate two you will get d n a over dt equals to minus n a naught dx over dt. So you, this is the new equation number three. Now you substitute three in equation one. So you will have r a v equals to minus n a naught dx over dt. Now, integrate. So, in order for you to calculate, ok, 
okay, now this is the equation. So, to determine the time required to achieve a specific conversion x, we write this equation in terms of dt equals to na0 dx over minus rav. Now, to get the t, you integrate t equals to and a naught is a constant put outside so you integrate from 0 to x dx over minus r a v so your integration will be when t equals to 0 x equals to 0 and when t equals to the time t x will be equals to x Right, so the equation to determine the time is this one. This is now how you relate with the conversion. Okay, now we continue to develop the equation for a CSTR. Okay, so previously in chapter 1, we have developed a design equation V equals to FA0 minus fa over minus ra this is equation number one also we know that fa not equals to sorry fa equals to fa not minus fa not times x this is equation 2. Okay, we write this equation 2. So, F A naught minus F A equals to F A naught X. This is equation 3. So, you put 3 in equation 1. So, you have V equals to f a naught x over minus r a so this is the relate the equation the developed design equation relating volume and x okay now design equation for flow reactor pfr okay now we know that for PFR, we have DFA over DV equals to RA. This is equation 1. And also, we know that FA not sorry again, FA equals to FA not minus FA not times X. This is equation number 2. Now, you differentiate equation 2. Differentiate equation 2 to the x. So, dfa equals to 0 minus fa not dx. So, this is equation 3. And you plug in 3 into 1. You will have minus F A naught DX over D V equals to R A. Rearrange this equation. Bring bring the minus sign to the right. So you have F A naught DX over D V equals to minus r a now rearrange the equation to get the volume you will have dv equals to f a naught dx over minus r a so integrate by taking limits v equals to 0 when x equals to 0 
So you have V equals to F A naught. It's constant you put outside from 0 to X D X over minus R A. So this is the design equation relating volume and conversion for a PFR. Okay, now this is for PFR. Meanwhile, for pack back reactor, for PBR, the only difference gain is because for pack back reactor, we calculate for the weight of catalyst. So instead of W, we have instead of the volume V, we have W equals to F A naught from 0 to X, you have D X over minus R A. Don't forget the prime. So that is for pack back react. Okay, now we have come to the summary of this lecture. So by this point, you now should be able to first define the conversion. What is the conversion? And second, develop design equation for batch and also for flow reactors. So this table summarizes all the design equation for each reactor. We have batch, CSTR, PFR and packback reactor. So you should be able to derive should be able to derive back the equation using the general mole balance equation. And at least you need to remember the differential form of each design equation for the rector. Okay, so that's the end of this part 1 lecture. So if you have any problem to understand, please refer to the textbook or your group mates. So in part 2, you will apply the design equation to calculate the reactor volume for a reactor in particular process. And we will also have further discussion in class. Okay, thank you and have a nice day ahead.